Hi, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack. And in this podcast, we'll be introducing the skeletal system with a focus on the structure and overall functions of bone tissue. The skeletal system consists of all of the body's bones, cartilages, tendons, and ligaments. In this unit, we'll emphasize the structure of bones, explore the different cells and tissues that comprise bone, how bones are made, and also how they're repaired. This area of specialization is a scientific field unto itself called osteology, which is the study of the structure of bones and the treatment of bone disorders. And you'll see the prefix osteo quite a bit in this unit. It refers to anything bone related. One aspect of the skeletal system that people don't often consider is the fact that every bone in the body, no matter how large or small, is an organ. Organs, of course, are structures made of two or more different tissues carrying out specific functions. Each bone consists of a variety of different tissues, all working to carry out a range of functions. These tissues include bone, also known as osseous tissue, cartilage, dense connective tissues, epithelial tissues, adipose tissues, and nervous tissues. Although bone is hardened and heavily mineralized, it is very much an active, living, breathing organ. Bone tissue is constantly tearing itself down and building itself back up in a process called remodeling. The skeletal system performs a wide range of functions, including body support, Bone forms the framework of the body structure, supporting tissues and organs, and making strong connections with the muscles and tendons. Because of this arrangement, we often refer to the body's bones and muscles as a combined musculoskeletal system. A second function is protection. Bone surrounds and protects the body's organs and soft tissues from injury such as how the rib cage protects the lungs and the heart, and how the brain is protected by the bones of the skull. A third function is movement. Bones are the sites of skeletal muscle attachment, where tendons from the muscle attach directly to bone. As muscles contract, they pull on the bone, generating movement. A fourth function is mineral homeostasis. Because bone tissue makes up a significant percentage of the body's weight, about 18%, and due to its composition, bone is involved in mineral storage and release, calcium and phosphorus in particular, which provide much of the bone's strength. Bone is heavily vascularized and can easily release minerals into the blood and transport them to other areas of the body where they're needed as well as to maintain overall mineral homeostasis or balance. A fifth function is blood cell production. Many bones contain red bone marrow, a connective tissue that generates the blood cells of the body, including the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and platelets. These blood cells form through a process called hemopoiesis, which means creation of blood. This flowchart illustrates the process of hemopoiesis beginning with pluripotent stem cells located within the marrow, and we'll explore this in detail later on in the course in Chapter 19 on blood. Red bone marrow is abundant in developing fetal bone, and in the adult bones, it's found in the irregular bones, such as the ribs, the sternum or breastbone, the hips, the vertebrae, and the skull. It's also found in the ends of the long bones, such as the humerus, the upper arm bone, and the femur, or thigh bone. A sixth function of bone is energy storage. 
As bone ages, much of the red bone marrow is converted to yellow bone marrow, which is made up mostly of adipose cells that store triglyceride fats and function as a source of energy. Let's now take a look at the overall structure of a typical long bone. Now the long bones are bones that are longer than they are wide, such as this femur or thigh bone, as well as the tibia, fibula, radius, ulna, and humerus. The shaft of a long bone is called the diaphysis. This is the long tube-like body of the bone that makes up most of the bone's length. It consists primarily of compact bone tissue. The proximal and distal ends of the bones are called the epiphyses. The proximal epiphysis is closest to the point of attachment of the bone to the body. Think proximal as approximate, which means closest to. The distal epiphysis is the end of the bone furthest away from the point of attachment of the bone to the body. Think distal as distant from. The epiphyses contain a type of bone tissue called spongy bone, which contains red bone marrow. The areas between the diaphysis and epiphyses are called the metaphyses. They form what we call the neck of a long bone. Each metaphysis contains a layer of hyaline cartilage called the epiphyseal plate, or growth plate, that causes the diaphysis of the bone to grow lengthwise. This growth stops in our mid to late teens and early 20s as the cartilage is replaced by bone and is now referred to as the epiphyseal line. Surrounding the area of the epiphyses that forms a joint, also called an articulation, is a layer of hyaline cartilage called the articular cartilage. It helps protect the ends of the bone, acting as the joint's shock absorber, and helps minimize friction where bone meets bone to produce a smoother range of motion. Surrounding most of the bone's surface is a tough protective covering of connective tissue and blood vessels called the periosteum, which means around the bone. It is attached to the bone by thick bundles of collagen proteins called perforating fibers, also referred to as Sharpie's fibers. The periosteum is made of an outer fibrous layer consisting of dense irregular connective tissue and an inner osteogenic layer made of bone forming cells that allow the bone to grow in thickness. In addition to protection, the periosteum provides attachment sites for tendons and ligaments, helps supply nutrients to bone tissue, and helps repair damaged bone. There is a hollow space inside the diaphysis called the marrow cavity or medullary cavity. It contains yellow bone marrow and many blood vessels. This space also helps reduce the body's weight and is located in the diaphysis since the tube-like structure of the long bone is able to provide significant strength because of its shape. Lining the medullary cavity is the endosteum, which consists of connective tissue and one layer of osteogenic cells that allow the bone to form from the inside of the diaphysis.